I want you to hear me, moms, all of you listening. You have raised your kids to go out, brave new experiences, and meet new people. You get to take a moment and congratulate yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back, a little atta girl. It's bittersweet. I know this. I've gone through two college drop-offs myself. And yes, it's hard because your role of mom is shifting. It's shifting again. And yet, it's exactly as it should be, right? Hi, and welcome to Beyond Empty Nest. I'm your host, Jody Silverman, speaker, mentor, and chief dare officer at Moms Who Dare. Every Thursday, I'll share stories of midlife transformation, happiness tips, and dare you to see the opportunities waiting for you so that you can make this next chapter even better than the last. If you're ready to dare, I'm ready to dare with you. Let's get into today's episode. Welcome to the season one finale. Oh my gosh, but don't worry. We're doing something super special for you during the month of August. Each week in August, you'll have something amazing to listen to, to support you and to inspire and to motivate you. So be sure and check your email for details coming soon. You don't wanna miss out on what's coming your way. And hey, if you're not getting our weekly podcast email, you can still add yourself to the list. The link is in the show notes below. All right, this is season one finale episode, and it's definitely one for moms. We're going to talk about college move-in day and the number one shift that every mom must make as they get ready to launch their children. And the reason I chose these topics is because August is when most college move-ins happen. And although it's an exciting time, it can also be stressful, and it's definitely full of conflicting emotions for both moms and our children, right? There's excitement from everyone. Everyone's a little nervous, a little anxiety, maybe a lot of anxiety. There's some sadness, bittersweet. It's all mixed together. Between the actual move, them leaving you, and you leaving them there, and then navigating what I call momming them from a distance, it's no wonder our emotions are all over the place. And it's my hope that this episode will offer you tools and tips to help you navigate this transition, feeling confident and with a little less stress. Hey everyone, I'm Jody, and this is the final mentor episode of season one. And in a moment, I'm gonna share with you some of my top tips to help make move-in day less stressful for all. But first, I have a very important message just for the moms out there. I want you to hear me, moms, all of you listening. You have raised your kids to go out, brave new experiences, and meet new people. You get to take a moment and congratulate yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back, a little atta girl. It's bittersweet. I know this. I've gone through two college drop-offs myself, and yes, It's hard because your role of mom is shifting. It's shifting again. And yet, it's exactly as it should be, right? As your kids go off to navigate their everyday life on their own, there's a shift that you must make as well so that you can start navigating your new normal. It's the number one shift every mom, really actually every parent, must make if we're going to allow our children our sons and daughters, to become good decision makers and problem solvers. And this shift is what I call going from fixer to coach. This shift, which I know you've all been slowly moving towards as you've watched your children go from elementary school to middle school to high school, this shift is what will give your children that sense of empowerment and the confidence they need to make decisions and problem solve. And hey, isn't that the goal of raising them? So let me share a little bit more about what I mean. So the fix, the fixer in us tells people what to do. The fixer is all about solving the problem for our children. 
And there was a time that we had to be in full out fixer mode. However, the level of fixing shifts naturally as they grow up. And it's a must shift when they leave home. Now the coach, what I mean by the coach is like an advisor, right? The coach asks questions to help our children, to help them figure out the best course of action or their best solution. This is empowerment. When we are their coach versus the fixer, we're letting our children know that we believe in them and that we believe at, that they have the confidence to make their own decisions, to figure out their best solutions. It's how we give them the confidence to believe in themselves. The fixer sounds like this, and I'm raising my hand because I still go into fixer mode. It's just with practice. With practice, we come out of fixer to coach. But here's what the fixer sounds like. When your son or daughter calls you with a problem, this is what you would sound like if you're the fixer. Hey, this is what you should do. Or if I were you, I would fill in the blank. Oh, no, no, no. What you need to do is, or this is how I want you to fill in the blank. That's what a fixer sounds like. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Look, it's natural to be a fixer. With practice though, we can shift more to coach. And this is what a coach sounds like. Remember, the coach is going to ask questions, not jump in to solve the problem. The coach might say something that sounds like this. So, hey, Dan, what outcome are you looking for here? Or Ellie, what role, if any, have you played in this conflict? You might ask as a coach, who else is involved? Who on campus or at work could maybe offer guidance or help you with this problem? Remember, mom, your end goal is to raise your children to be self-sufficient, independent, thriving adults capable of making decisions. And by making this shift ourselves, we're giving our sons and daughters the best gift. We're giving them that empowerment. We're giving them the confidence. And hey, you know what? We're giving ourselves empowerment and confidence that we laid a solid foundation for our children to stand on. It works both ways. I want you to try it out. I want you to try it out. We have a couple of weeks before college moving day for some of you, and I want you to try it out. The next time your, your son or daughter comes to you with a problem or when they call you on the phone with a problem and they ask you what they should do, because they will, because they only know what they know, right? I want you to pause in that moment they ask you or share their problem. I want you to pause, take a deep breath and ask them a question instead of offering a quick solution or your opinion. And here, I really want to help you with this because this is something I needed a lot of help with. I am a total fixer. If you ask my kids, they'll tell you I still do it. It's a, it's a practice. It's a practice. I've put together a fixer coach resource that includes five questions every mom must have in a parenting toolbox to help stay in the coach mode. It's in the show notes below. So you're going to grab a copy of that. It's going to help you. With practice, you will find yourself easily sliding into the coach mode versus jumping right into fixer mode. I know you've got this. All right, so let's get back to college moving day. I have spoken to hundreds, if not thousands of, thousands of moms over the years. I've been a coach for MD Nestros. And I've come up with a list of nine tips that will help make moving day less stressful for everyone. And you can also, you can grab a copy of that full list below in the show notes as well. But I'm going to share three with you right now. Number one, know where you're going. Do you need a parking pass? Is there a specific time to arrive? Leave extra time in case of road closures or detours. You don't want to add any stress by showing up late for you or your son or your daughter. And hey, here's a good tip in for coach mode and empowering your child. Why don't you empower your son or daughter 
to find this information out for you. Include them in the process of move-in day. Let them go online and see what you need to know before the actual move-in day arrives. It'll probably be better at finding the information anyway, right? All right, number two, bring a toolbox, a complete toolbox with a hanger, a flathead, and a Phillips head screwdriver, different size screwdrivers, complete with scotch tape, masking tape, scissors, and don't forget to get those command brand wall hanging hooks. They go on the wall, but when you take them down, they do not ruin the wall. And number three, make sure you bring water and snacks, plenty of water and snacks. Moving day can be long and strenuous. You want to keep up your fuel and you don't want to get hangry during the day. There are six other really important tips that I have on this list. You can grab a copy of that in the show notes below. And I have one other bonus tip for you, mom. Don't forget to bring the letter for under their pillow before you leave. You know the letter I'm talking about, mom. That love letter that you wrote the minute they graduated high school. The dear so-and-so, you're going to do great. I'm so proud of you. You've got this. That letter that tells them how much you love them and that we're only a phone call away, but we know you've got this call anytime letter. It's the mom love letter. And I would have dad write a letter too. Why not? Don't forget to leave it under the pillow. And another great leave behind and little shameless plug. And for those of you who are listening to this podcast right now, you might want to head over to our YouTube channel because I'm holding up my next resource that you can leave behind. It is a part guide, part journal that my mom and I created just for you. It's called, you're on your own now what? Tips and wisdom from mom. It's the perfect leave behind. And my best tip is leave it in that medicine cabinet that you create for them. If you put all their pharmacy and medical stuff in a drawer, this is a great resource to leave in there because the first chapter is all about tips and wisdom on what to do if you're sick. And you can fill in all your best tips in this book so that they know that you are just a turn of the page away. Once again, moms, I, this has been a packed mentor moment episode with lots of resources, all with one goal in mind, to support you so that you can best show up and support your children as they head off to school around to the world. I packed it with a lot of resources. So what you will find again in the show notes below, so I don't want you to miss anything, you can download the Fixer Coach resource that includes my five questions. There's a full list of the nine tips for college move-in day. There's a link on where to purchase a copy of this amazing part guide, part journal my mom and I created together. And there's also a link that you can click on to add yourself to our weekly podcast emails. Because once again, season one is over. And while I'm busy working and securing more amazing guests to support you through this empty nest midlife chapter of life, you are going to receive some surprise episodes from our vault, from our Moms Who Dare vault in the month of August to continue to support you through the summer. And finally, if you have not done so yet, please leave us a review. Five stars are always welcome. And we also want a written review from you. We want to hear your thoughts. And you don't have to write anything fancy. You don't have to be a, a, an established writer to leave a review. Simply tell us, what was your favorite episode? And maybe why? What would you like about it? Maybe you just simply liked the energy behind the speaker. Was there a tip in this episode or a previous episode that really landed with you, that helped you move forward and get unstuck somewhere in life. Anything you want to share is something we want to hear. And when you leave a review, it helps us reach more moms, more midlife women, so that we can make an even bigger impact, send out that ripple effect. And our mission with this podcast is to really make a big impact and reach as many moms and as many midlife women as possible. 
to support you in getting clear and getting unstuck, embracing this next chapter and dare to live your fullest, most exciting chapter yet. So check your email for something special to come in August. And then we'll be back with brand new episodes starting in September. And as I always say, dare on. Thank you for listening to this episode of Beyond Empty Nest. Head over to jodysilverman.com for our full show notes, more information, and additional resources to support you through Empty Nest and Midlife. And if you've enjoyed today's show and are ready to embrace this midlife chapter, then you must take the Happy For No Reason quiz. When you take the quiz, you'll discover what your happiness set point is and how you can increase it and continue to strengthen it. This is just one key to navigating life transitions and discovering your most fulfilled and daring life. So go ahead, click the link below and take the quiz now. I'll see you next Thursday. Dare on. Dare on.